Uh, oh, this is the second in our set of uh, tutorial videos for the uh, Chapter 7 car, the content on hypothesis testing for one sample. Um, I know this video is taking a little longer to make, and we're not going to use StatCrunch in this video, but after this we will be. Um, but we are going to see two examples here that you will need to expect to see on the test. So that's your little bonus for uh, watching this video. So this is going to give us some more background information on um, how our decisions are made, whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So uh, before we move on to working examples of homework for hypothesis testing for means or proportions, some additional information is necessary. First, for any hypothesis test, there are only two possible decisions. The researcher will always either reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. The following table shows the options for formulating decisions based on the original, original claim. Uh, and I already see a typo here. So notice when I reject the null, the way I uh, interpret decision is different depending on where the claim is. Did the, is the claim in the null or is the claim in the alternative? But this table is a good rule of thumb for you to use. You're welcome to use this when you take the test to do the interpretations on the application problems we'll be doing later. So the decision to fail or reject, to reject or to fail to reject is determined by using either the critical value method, sometimes referred to as the test statistic method, or the p-value method. Uh, the two methods are related in that both involve comparing the test statistics probability with the level of significance. Um, the p-value method is going to be good enough to make all your decisions for the test you're going to take. Uh, I find it uh, more straightforward. It's more intuitive to use. Um, now remember, we're looking at, uh, we saw this from the previous video, we could have a two-tailed test equal to, not equal to, which you see the symbol here. We can have a left-tailed test, which is less than here, or we could have a right-tailed test, which is greater than here. Remember, the direction of the test, two-tailed, left-tailed, right-tailed, is dependent on the alternative hypothesis, not the null hypothesis. So throughout the application problems, you're going to be given levels of significant, uh, significance, and they're denoted by alpha, the lower, lower, lowercase Greek letter alpha. By setting the level of significance at a small value, you're saying you want the probability of rejecting a true null, null hypothesis to be small. Commonly used levels of significance are alpha equals 0 0.10 or 10 percent. Alpha equals 0.05 or 5%, this one's very common, and alpha equals 0.01 or 1%. Now the test statistic method we're gonna get into when we do some of the specific examples, but uh, the way StackCrunch works, you're always gonna be able to look to the p-value to make your decision. Although you will be asked to calculate the test statistic and, and provide it in the uh, examples uh, and the critical values. And we remember we met the critical values in the last uh, section on confidence intervals and minimum sample sizes. And the way you would do this is, is the same. You would use the normal calculator or the T calculator, but we'll get to that in the examples. Um, so in the diagrams you see shaded blue areas, those are called rejection regions. And locating the critical values in the test statistic, Z or T with StatCrunch will be addressed, as already stated. So let's really focus on the p-value method uh, now. Uh, the p-value or probability value method is much more straightforward or intuitive, like I said. Uh, the p-value is calculated using StatCrunch and compared against the significance level, alpha. And I see, see I have this symbol here. The decision rule based on the p-value is listed below along with a couple of cheesy rhymes to help you remember. If p is less than or equal to a, then reject the null. If the null is low, it must go. And then the other side of that is if p is greater than alpha, then fail to reject the null. If the null is high, let it fly. So you'll be saying those rhymes years later and cursing me for it, but that's okay. Uh, the following example question applies the p-value method when given a p-value from the hypothesis test. 
This question is addressed in the chapter notes on, Bright, on Brightspace. It is not in the MyLab homework assignment, but we will have a question like this uh, in the uh, exam for this particular chapter. And believe me, it will. this question will always be in the homework going forward. But we're going to look at our p-value, uh, and you'll find this very straightforward. Uh, and they're going to give us a p-value, and they're going to ask us to make our decisions. And they're going to give us, we, they want us to make decisions for alpha equals 0 0.01, alpha equals 0 0.05, and alpha equals 0 0.10. All right, so the first one, here's the p-value that we're given right here, p equals 0 0.0296. So it's almost 3%. Um, so do I reject or fail to reject the null at the 0 0.01 level of significance? Well, I can see that 0 uh, 0.0296 is, uh, is more than 0 0.01. It's greater than. So that being the case, I'm going to fail to reject the null because the p-value 0.0296 is greater than alpha equals 0.01. The reason I'm putting this question in there is so that you are able to easily make these decisions going forward. So in this case, I'm going to fail to reject because the, um, the p-value is greater than the level of significance. Now, the next one we're going to move it to 0 0.05 level of significance. Well, we can see that uh, that almost 3% is less than this, isn't it? If the null is low, it's got to go. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value, 0 0.0296, is less than alpha equals 0 0.05. So you have to be very careful to watch what alpha is given for each one of the sample problems that you work going forward in the homework and both on the exam. So in this case, I'm going to reject the null because the p-value is less than 0 0.05. If the, if the null is low, it's got to go. Uh, and then the last one, again, uh, uh, the level of significance is now at uh, 10%. And again, I'm going to reject the null because the p-value of 0 0.0296 is less than alpha equals 0 0.10. Again, I can apply the rhyme. If the null is low, it's got to go. So I want you to be able to use p-values and, and for the test that you're doing going forward, whether it's for a mean with a standard deviation known, a mean with a standard deviation unknown, uh, either one of those things, sorry, that was an email coming in, um, or uh, a proportion, the p-value, the way you apply it is the same for all of these different tests. So you can always count on it to make sure you have the right example. Um, so the following two examples on the next page of these notes apply to concepts addressed in the chapter notes. In these questions, we are tasked with identifying the claim, writing the null, and alternative hypotheses symbolically, and provide interpretations for either failing to reject or rejecting the null hypothesis as it applies to the original claim. There will be questions like, like this on the exam, and it will be like a fill in the blank. So here, let's look at it. Determine whether the claim stated below represents the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis. If a hypothesis test is performed, how should you interpret the decision that A rejects the null hypothesis or B fails to reject the null hypothesis? A scientist claims that the mean incubation period for eggs of a species of bird is at least 32 days. So first we're going to write this claim symbolically. The claim is mu greater than or equal to 32. And right here we see that this claim has the condition of equality. So the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify my null and my alternative hypothesis. I'm going to write them symbolically. So the null is mu greater than or equal to 32, which is the claim because the claim right here does have the condition of equality. Um, and remember, when we get into stat crunch, you're not even going to use the, the, the uh, null hypothesis will always be entered as equal to. Um, and then the alternative hypothesis is mu is less than 32. Does the claim represent the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis? So we already addressed that, but since the claim contains a statement of equality, which greater than or equal to has equality in it, it represents the null hypothesis. How should you interpret a decision that rejects the null hypothesis? 
there is sufficient evidence to reject the claim that the mean incubation period for the eggs of a species of bird is at least 32 days. Now let's go on to another, uh, to the second part of that. How should you interpret a decision that fails to reject the null hypothesis? There is insufficient evidence to reject the claim that the mean incubation period for the eggs of a species of bird is at least 32 days. And if you have any questions, go back to the table that was on uh, at the beginning of this set of notes. Remember, this set of notes is going to be available in Teams for the section on hypothesis testing. Click on files, and all these notes will be available to you. Uh, so let's look at the second example. Uh, again, we're going to look at the claim. Uh, does what? What is the null hypothesis of one of the alternative hypotheses, and how should we interpret the decision? So we're doing the same thing, but the case is different. A scientist claims that the mean incubation period for the eggs of a species of bird is more than 32 days, right? The claim symbolically. So the claim, um, sorry, those are some extra letters there I can take out of this. Um, Write the claim symbolically. The claim is mu greater than 32. Now notice this time we do not have the conditional quality. So that tells me that this is going to become the alternative hypothesis, which I'm going to put down here. Uh, mu greater than 32 is my claim, and this time it's going to be in the alternative hypothesis. The complement or the opposite of that is mu less than or equal to 32. So I have my null and alternative hypothesis, and this does going to change. And by the way, you notice the researcher's claim now is in the alternative hypothesis. And in real life, you're frequently going to set see hypothesis tests set up that way. They're hoping that the null, uh, the the uh, test will will give them um, cause to um, to reject the null, which provides support for their claim. Uh, I hope that made sense. I probably need to do a better job explaining that. Uh, again. Frequently, researchers will set it up so that their claim will be in the alternative hypothesis. Does the claim represent the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis? We've already said, since the claim does not contain a statement of quality, it represents the alternative hypothesis. How should you interpret a decision that rejects the null hypothesis? There is sufficient evidence to support the claim, because we're, if we're rejecting the null and the claim is the alternative, so we have some support. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean incubation period for eggs of a species of bird is more than 32 days. And when I fail to reject, how should I interpret my decision? Uh, there is insufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean incubation period for the eggs of a species of bird is more than 32 days. Again, I have no problems with you using these notes, but expect questions like these last two on the next test. Uh, going forward, we'll get into using StatCrunch for doing some of the different application problems. And in each one of those, we'll get a review on how to find these uh, critical values that we began back in Chapter 6. So um, the, hopefully the uh, videos will come a little quicker going forward. And uh, everybody hang in there. We're near the end of our uh, uh, pandemic, pandemic approach to teaching statistics. Excuse me, learning statistics.